Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 36 for a spaceship game that I'm building with my buddy Rich and a small community team on Unreal Engine 5. Today, I'm really excited to show off some new in-game assets with our new material system, a new flyable spaceship, some new upcoming ships for the game, a complete overhaul to our movement system that is complex and physics-based, a new mouse input system for the game that's going to allow us to control with keyboard and mouse much better, and a mass system that's going to allow us to dynamically change the mass of our ships based on components and cargo that will then affect the thrusters and acceleration rates it's some pretty in-depth stuff and let's get into it starting off with the assets so this clip is from a few devlogs ago where i was talking about our new layered material system and how we were going to be able to use that to increase the material texture detail on our nav beacon this nav beacon previously was just done with a series of 4k textures which were being stretched kind of thin. And as you got close, you could see the materials themselves were getting kind of fuzzy. Since then, we have gone through an overhaul with the nav beacon. We've had a modeling pass, adding some more wires, increasing the detail on the docking areas of the beacon. And we've re-unwrapped it to use with the new material system using layers and tiling textures so that as we get close to the areas like the docking ports, which we will be seeing up close in game, the detail holds up much better. We're also using uh, a first pass on our decal system. So the stripe textures and little triangles and the text on here is all done with decals. So those can be done at higher resolutions as well. The nav beacon is still a work in progress and there's a few more steps left, but I'm quite happy with the direction it's taking. Last devlog, we showed off a gray box of our size 2 cargo vessel. This devlog, we've got a material on it and we've got a first pass of the decal system. I'm calling it the Sojourner. The first variant of the Sojourner's got some fairly small engines for its size. When this guy's loaded up, it's probably going to be a bit of a slower ship. It's not particularly well armed, but it's still got some missile pods and turrets to defend itself or go aggressive if you want. Now, not all of our ships are going to be boxed container like ships this is specifically for uh, a line of cargo ships but as we start moving into multi-role ships we will start to play around with different designs and get a little more creative these here are from our concept artist Kruger who's helping me design some entry-level multi-role ships for the game and we're just kind of having some fun with the design language of it for this workflow we're trying something a little different where Kruger doesn't work in 3d too much so he'll concept out an image and then I'll do a block out of it real quick make sure all the components fit and adjust the concept as needed and then I send it back to Kruger and he'll do a detail pass over some of the modeling that I've done and kind of dial in the ship. And once the concept art detail pass is done, we can then get into the modeling detail pass. And this is something that Johnny Popcorn, one of our 3D modelers, has been working on. This is based on Island's concept for a pirate battleship. And we've been making some progress on this one. This is going to be a massive size six ship with huge weapons, huge engines. Uh, I'm very excited about this ship. And maybe you guys can help me think of a name for this. It It's kind of like this behemoth of a vessel very thick big armor meant to just smash through stuff and take a beating let me know in the comments if you've got a good name for this class of battleship now one of the concepts that's been very core to the whole design process of this game is a deep piloting and flight system which you would think hey it's kind of a 2d spaceship game how deep do we really need to get well as we started building out the game we realized we needed all of our flight to be physics based and we needed minute control over every vector of thrust on the ship so that we could create very custom different feeling spaceships in the game and so this ship here is kind of a gray box attack ship that has rocket engines on all sides and rcs thrusters on all sides and we now finally have control over every vector mr meteor a programmer who's been working with us for quite a while now specifically on this system has really been hard at adding in all the features we want and creating a system that's very easy to add in all the thrust amounts that we want in each vector and it'll basically auto calculate all the physics for us 
Wasn't easy to get there. This version of the system is literally version 4.0 of our movement plugin that he's been working on. And uh, now I can custom tweak every ship in the game, which you will see later when we get into some of the mass and inertia stuff is going to be very important. And one of the big updates he's made to the system is mouse controlled aiming, which sounds like it should be simple. Just rotate the ship to look at where the mouse cursor is, right? Well, since we're doing things with physics, the system has to know how hard it needs to accelerate and when to start decelerating so that the ship is aiming perfectly at the cursor. He tried to explain some of the physics to me and honestly, it was going over my head. And in fact, shout out to community member on Discord, Reckless, who sat down with Mr. Meteor to go over some of the complex physics of this. Uh, I don't think it was all super clear from the start. I can't even begin to understand the physics of it. So it's awesome that we had some people with some pretty deep physics knowledge able to come on board and give us some tips on where to go with this. So not only does mouse controlled aiming and turning of the ship uh, allow us to start developing out our keyboard and mouse layouts and set up for how the game is gonna play, but also the cursor controlled aiming is what we're gonna use to control the AI in the game as well because the coding for it is much easier once we can just have the AI aim at a certain point in space things get way easier and so this was kind of a roadblock for developing out the AI systems further now that we're past this point it's going to open up a whole bunch of other stuff to play with the first of which is ship mass, in which the movement system will now respect a changing mass amount on spaceships. Again, this is a pretty complicated system, and I'm gonna let Rich, our tech lead, explain how this works. One thing we're working on that's still a work in progress is getting control over the ship's mass and having the ship's mass affect its acceleration ability, also known as delta V or difference in velocity. So we wanna have what's called a dry mass, which is the mass of the ship when it's basically empty. In different fields, dry mass can mean different things, but for us, it means just the hull. The current mass would include everything from the hull to the fuel, to everything in the inventory and the things that are added to the ship, like weapons, missile pods, airlocks, all that. Our reason for going with just the hull for dry mass is that we want all the weapons and attachments and things to not just contribute to the mass, but be swappable. So you can replace a gun with a heavier gun, so that will read on your mass gauge as the ship getting a little bit heavier. And for that to work, we want the dry mass to always be at the same spot. Then there's what's called the wet mass, which is a mass at which the acceleration ability or the delta V is so low that it's not useful. These settings are gonna be configurable for each ship. Each ship is gonna have a base mass. So let's go look at how that's set up. We have a base mass field here for this cargo ship size 3A. It starts at zero. Let's just see what that looks like. So when the hull's mass is zero, we're still getting some of the missile pods and rockets and weights from things like that. But what we have is a really nimble little thing which this is a hauler, so it shouldn't really be nimble. So let's give the hull some base mass. Let's go with 100 tons, it's 100,000 kilograms. Now we get, it's a little bit more sluggish. It feels a little more realistic. The rockets feel better. The RCS feels better. So it may still be a little bit heavy for an empty ship. We'll just have to decide that as we play with it. Now, as the mass increases, we're gonna say we have a full fuel tank, we have a full inventory. Um, let's put this, actually, let's just crank this all the way up to a kiloton, and we'll see that the acceleration or delta V is just so slow that it's not worth playing with it this way. We're, we're overburdened. Technically, we can keep adding on to this mass and still be able to accelerate just really slowly. But at a certain point, we're gonna have a gauge that tells you where the top of this mass is, where it's gonna start feeling useless. And then the bottom of the gauge will be your empty ship. Another thing we wanna do, which is why this is taking more effort that we wanna put into it, is we want to be able to control the ship's mass dynamically 
with abilities and effects using Unreal's gameplay ability system or gas. So let's say you're into hauling and you want to take a perk that gives you 2% off the mass of your ship. This will be done through gameplay ability system. Uh, we can also have things like add-ons to your ship that improve the mass, temporary effects that increase or decrease the mass. So in addition to the gas stuff, we want to control the mass of an actor that has a bunch of stuff attached to it. And this is something called welded bodies. When you start getting into that, it starts to get complicated in Unreal. So as you can see, a lot of math going on behind the scenes. I'm happy to not necessarily need to be involved in some of those discussions or problem solving phases of development, but it is core to the experience that we want to develop. And I am really excited about getting more of our movement and mass and gameplay online because it's really going to affect the player experience where people are going to really want to consider how much cargo they're taking with them how much stuff they're picking up on a mission, how it's going to affect your combat performance, how much fuel you have to expend, uh, all exciting stuff. Again, shout out to our community for being very helpful and active and fun. On Discord, you guys should drop by our Discord and check it out. It is linked in the video description. And if you guys want to learn more about this game, check out the rest of our devlog here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.